Okay guys, so let's derive the moment of inertia of a thin rod. So so let's uh, take a thin rod and we're gonna calculate the moment of inertia around the center of the rod. So let's say that this is the center. So assuming that this is the axis of rotation of the rod. So this is the axis of rotation. Axis of rotation. Okay this one so let's assume that the length of the rod is L so this whole length is L okay so this is uh, we're going to define an axis so this is our uh, x equals 0 so this is x equals 0 so since the length is L uh, this is going to be x equals minus L by 2 and this is going to be x equals L by 2 so now we know that the moment of inertia of a uniform object right is an integral right of r squared times the um, times that small mass dm right so which we have to uh, show over here so let's let's say that this is that small mass dm right and it is at a distance uh, let's say x from the uh, from the origin so now um, this is a 1d integral r squared becomes x squared so x squared times dm Right. And the limits of x are now minus L by 2 to L by 2. Okay. So now uh, we have to look at what is dm, right? So, so let's say that the linear density of the rod, so linear density is mass divided by the length of the rod, right? So this is the total mass and this is the length of the rod. So dm, right? is the density of the rod multiplied by the small um, um, small mass element dx right so the length of this small mass element is dx right so so if you uh, multiply the length with the density you get the mass dm right okay so now let's plug that in over here so you get minus l by 2 to l by 2 x squared and mu is a constant that's the density of the rod and then dx. Right? So the integral, remember, of um, x squared dx is x cubed divided by uh, three. So, so from some, um, so you put in the limits, right? The lower limit, upper limit minus the lower limit. Let's say this is a, this is b. Then you have to do upper limit minus the lower limit. So, so then you get mu, right? And then x cubed by three, and then minus L by 2 is the lower limit, L by 2 is the upper limit. So now 3 is obviously a constant. We can take that out of the uh, bracket. So you get mu divided by 3. And then L by 2 cubed is L cubed by 8. And then minus, and if you get a minus sign, the cube of a minus sign is also a cube. So this becomes a plus. You get two minus signs. So this becomes L cubed by 8. So, so you get um, mu by 3, uh, 2L cubed by 8, and so you get mu times L cubed. Uh, so you get a 4 over here, and then that's divided by 12, right? So mu is uh, m divided by L, right? So you get m divided by 12, and then there is an L over here, and then L cubed, right? So eventually one of the Ls cancel out, you get a 2 over here. So you get 1 over 12 ml squared. So that's the moment of inertia around the center of mass. Okay, so this is how you can uh, get the moment of inertia around the center of mass for a uniform rod. So if you want, again, uh, the moment of inertia around uh, this axis, for, for example, right? So if you want, um, oops, I'm in a straight line. Okay. <coughs> So, um, so if you want moment of inertia on this axis, so let's say this is the axis of rotation, you can use the parallel axis theorem. So let's do that over here. So let's uh, um, use, so, so let's say, so remember parallel axis theorem says that if you know the moment of inertia on the center of mass, you can get it around any axis that is parallel to the uh, center of mass axis. So this axis, this is the new axis, is parallel to the center of mass axis. So I center of mass, we know, and then, you need to um, get the distance between the uh, 
between that axes, right? So this distance is d, right? And d is l by 2, right? So you get m, m is the mass of the rod, and d squared. So you get 1 over 12m l squared plus uh, m l squared by 4. And so if you um, bring these together, simplify that, you get... Uh, so you divide and multiply by 3 over here, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 by 12, so you get 1 over 3 ml squared. So that's the moment of inertia around the new axis. So this is how the parallaxis theorem can be useful in finding the moment of inertia around the new axis.